Hey everyone, my name is Mark, and in this video I'm installing the Model Train Technology Block Signal and Detector Starter Kit, which comes in N, H, O, S, and O scale. Stick around to the end to get my thoughts on the process and the product. Jim Lewis founded Model Train Technology, and the company is based out of Orlando, Florida. They have a YouTube channel and a website, and I suggest you check them out if you're interested in automation on your layout. For years, I've been looking for a simple way to create flashing signals at a grade crossing. And when I came across this product, I was very hopeful. I purchased the starter set because it comes with everything you need to set up for crossing flashers, except for the actual crossing flashers. You can add them to the kit, but I already bought some from Walters. It comes with two manuals, a very small screwdriver, a signal controller, a power module, and a power cord to plug your power module into the wall. Before I go on, let me explain that I'll be showing you specifically how I set this up for Walther's crossing flashers. This system can do so much, and again, I encourage you to watch the videos or visit the website to see for yourself. First, I plugged the power module in and turned it on. A blue light appeared, meaning it had power. Then I attached the two black wires from the signal controller. This is where that handy little screwdriver comes in. This will give the signal controller power indicated with a blue light as well. And as you can see, there are many ports on the power module, meaning it can send power to several components. Then I attach the two red wires from the precision detector to the power module, giving it power, and the yellow I attach to the signal controller. This also has a blue light. Are you still with me? Okay, let's turn off all the blue lights and connect our red flashing lights. Next, it was time to attach my crossing flashers. I started with one to keep things easier. Like I do with all thin wires, I soldered on some thicker wires so that they were longer and stronger. The flashers come with three wires. The ground wire must be attached to the far left marked ground. Well, I don't think it matters where the other two go. Turn the power module back on and nothing happens. That's because there is something very important you have to do if you have Walther's crossing flashers or other products that aren't compatible. I won't get into the electrical jargon, but it's an easy fix. Another step you'll have to do is program the signal controller so that it knows to operate a flashing signal. This component comes with nine preset commands and you can easily tell it which one to do. All you do is press the select button eight times and wait for the blue light to flash eight times and you're good to go. And one last thing you have to do if you have Walther signals is reduce the voltage. This baby is pumping out 12 volts, but these tiny LEDs only need about five. It works! Awesome! Let's make a few adjustments before putting them on the layout. You can set the timer on the precision detector. If I wave my hand in front of the sensor, the light comes on indicating activation. You'll notice that it takes a good 30 seconds for the blue light to go off after I move my hand. That means the crossing signals will flash for 30 seconds after the last car trips the sensor. To adjust that time, all you do is take a, the microscopic screwdriver and turn the little dial on the right. I turn it all the way to show you how fast it can turn off. Here's a demo using my hands. This dial on the left will adjust the distance the sensor has to pick up a moving item. One neat feature that I really like is you can adjust the speed of flashing red lights. Take your super small screwdriver and finally just wiggle it around and eventually you should, almost there, got it. There's a small screw you can turn and it will change the speed. My grade crossing, which is just made with some foam and a strip of styrene in the middle, is near a building so I'm going to hide the precision detector behind it. It does come with a casing that looks like an electrical box, but it's not to scale. I almost bought the end scale version to make it look prototypical, but didn't want to chance it. I drilled a hole for the wires and then cut out a larger space for the black plug. The YouTube video and website show a special insert, but it didn't come with the kit. Here we go, the moment of truth. Can I get a drum roll please? Yes, that is so cool. I waited so long to have a feature like this on my layout. And they stopped. Well, that's an easy fix. I'll adjust the timer. It may take a few test runs before I get it right. Uh oh, here comes another train on the outside track. It's headed right for the sensor. Surely it'll trip the... Oh wow, that is so cool. The precision detector didn't even notice that second train. I am so pleased with... What's that? Does it work in the dark? 
Mm, I don't know. Let's try it. It does! What if someone comes in with a flashlight looking for their teeny weeny screwdriver? It still works! What if your kid runs in and starts flicking the lights on and off? Still works! Incredible! These precision detector sensors are non-infrared, which I think plays a part. I am very pleased with how this all turned out. So pleased, in fact, that I bought another sensor for the other side of the flashers, so if a train comes in the other direction, the lights will go off as well. I also purchased the magnets that attach to the power module and the signal controller, so I can easily attach them under my layout. If you do plan on purchasing the set, I recommend that you bite the bullet and buy all the components from model train technology, including the signals, because they'll probably work a lot better and look just as good as any other ones you can buy off the internet. Thanks for the help of some editing, this whole process seems flawless, but I did encounter some bumps and hiccups along the way. So the following criticisms are not deal breakers, just things you should be aware of so that you don't make the same mistakes I did. First, I found the instruction manuals a little difficult to follow. The kit came with two, but it was unclear on which one to read first. I like step-by-step -step instructions, especially when it comes to electronics. I also would have appreciated a diagram on how to hook up crossing signals. I found that the signal controller manual was written primarily for these tricolor block signals. I also found some mistakes with page numbers. Here it says you can see a diagram on page 11, but really it's on page 17. Am I nitpicking? Maybe. But when things don't work... Watch how cool this is! Oh my gosh. Of course, of course it doesn't work! You want a reliable source you can turn to. The good news is, the YouTube videos are a great complement to the manuals, and Jim does a great job with his demonstrations. Second, the wires on these Walther's crossing flashers were way too small to stay screwed in to the signal controller. Now luckily I don't mind soldering larger wires onto them to make things easier. Third, the precision detector. It may be tricky for you to install since the black plug is not round, but rectangular. Just something to plan ahead for. Fourth. Although the signal controller is quite easy to program, you never know what mode it's set to. For instance, the default setting is that it's set to deliver 12 volts. I set it to deliver 5 volts, or did I? I have no way of knowing, and I don't want to risk frying my LEDs. So to be safe, I use a multimeter to check the voltage output. I also couldn't find a reset button in case you want everything back to the factory default settings. Lastly, and this one's kind of on me. The instructions say to test the sensor by waving your hand in front of it and the blue light should turn off. Well, it didn't and I panicked. And if I kept reading, I would have seen that you can adjust the timer. I must say, the customer service model train technology provided was excellent. I emailed them and received a reply within five minutes. In the future, I'd love to see a troubleshooting guide at the back of the manual and or a frequently asked questions page on the website. Also, one note for Canadians, the price is a little bit more because of shipping costs and, of course, the exchange rate. Again, these are not deal breakers. I'm really impressed with the system and the possibilities are endless. No soldering necessary. You can adjust the speed of the flashers. You can adjust the distance for sensor reaction. And you get a cute little screwdriver. If you or someone you know has a system, I would love to know what you think about it or what they think about it in the comments down below. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, take care. Okay, let's see. Thanks for buying, purchasing. Plug system into wall and turn the power on. Yeah, easy enough. Oops, I guess I better read the entire manual. Now, where's that flashlight? In this video, no. I won't get into the electronical gar jargon. I won't get into the electronic. Electrical, 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 electrical. Thanks to the help, which is available in NHOS and O-Scale. Stick around to the end and I'll give you my thoughts on the process and the product.